Welcome to East Friendship Live. Yeah. Come on, we're so thankful that you chose to worship with us on this Sunday morning. Right? Come on, get up on your feet. We come to worship the Lord all over the land, all over the nation. Because he's been a mighty good God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, in darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. That is all.
yes, Lord. Say all will see how great, all will see how great, how great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. All will see how great, how mighty you are, Lord. How wonderful you are, great is our God. I don't know about you, but I'm so desperate for the Lord. Without him in my life, without him by my side, without him leading me, guiding me, Lord, I'd be lost without you. Does anybody feel like that out there? Because see, God is our source. And whenever you have a source, that means you have to go back to it in order to get what you need from it. And I need God as my source every single day. You are the air I breathe. You are the song that I sing. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. Come on, fellas, help me sing it. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Oh, my. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Somebody say your holy presence. Your holy presence. to you. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Come on, say your very word. Your very Hallelujah, Jesus. word is spoken, spoken to, me. to me. And I love this part right here. Somebody say, this is the air I breathe, Lord. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Come on, let's say this with some power. Your whole
without you. to guide me, Lord. I'm lost without you. Come on. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for I'm desperate for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can't make it without you, Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are, for what you've done and what you always do, God, what you continue to do. Be mindful of us, oh God. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be a, a part of the dawning of a new day, a day that you have created, oh God, the day that you said would be from the foundation of the world and you saw fit to allow us to be a part of that day. God, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. God, we thank you that you watched over us through our night hour, oh God, that you watched over us, you kept us during our most, most vulnerable times, God. God, we rejoice in the fact that you have allowed us to see this day and be a part of this service. Be Lord over this service today, oh God. Be Lord over this service and, and deliver people, set people free, oh God. We invite you into this space right now, oh God, to heal, deliver, and set free. We say, have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God, in this place, in this time. And Father, that no one who is under the sound of my voice will leave the same. That they will come, and when it's all over, they will be able to say, I met Jesus today, oh God. Father, we thank you for all that you've said, all that you've done, and all that you're going to do. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we all have a reason to rejoice and be glad. Good morning, East Friendship family and friends. We are so excited to share this moment with you. We know that you could have been on any online services anywhere, but we're so happy that you decided to join East Friendship Live on Facebook and YouTube. Listen, if you are a member of East Friendship, we welcome you. If you are watching with us for the very first time, we welcome you too and hope to see you again. We want to let you know if we could, we would give you a hug. But right now we can't uh, because we're on a virtual experience, okay? But what, what you can do is repost this, okay? Share with all your friends. Matter of fact, go share with 10 people right now so they can receive the blessings you're receiving right now. One last thing, be active in worship, okay? Stand to your feet, clap your hands, pray, sing out loud, sing so loud so the neighbors can hear you. Say, uh, yes, sir! <laughs> now look, get ready to be, to be blessed, okay? If you hear me today, that you have the desire to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. East Friendship, let's go. Praise the Lord, everybody, and let us exalt his name together. At East Friendship, we invite you to our community to get to know God, find freedom, and discover your purpose, and make a difference. Here are ways you can continue to grow with us in this season and get connected to the East Friendship family. Hey, East Friendship you! Kingdom Kids are live on Zoom this Sunday at 1 p.m. The Kingdom Kids Church, KKC, 5 and under, are locked into Zoom at 1 p.m. on the second and fourth Sundays. And if you're 12 and under, meet us on the first and third Sundays. Today, at 1 p.m., we're excited about having Deacon Preston Wilson as our teacher. He's gonna keep us up jumping and laughing. It's gonna be really good. Parents, please help your young ones to zoom in. Our teens are on break this month as they plan and prepare for vacation Bible school in September. Can't wait to see you. Hello, church. Pastor Maxwell has called East Friendship to another season of prayer and fasting this September. 
and we would love for you, your family, and friends to be part of it. Something powerful happens when the church gathers together to seek God through prayer and fasting. And right now, we need a great move of God. For three weeks, beginning September 1st through the 21st of September, we will gather together online or personally at home to worship together. Hear a word of encouragement and pray both individually and corporately. Please stay tuned for ways you can partner with us as we faithfully seek God first, trusting his power alone to create a lasting impact on our lives, our churches, and our world. Are you on board this season? Let us know by posting in the chat box right below. Now, if you have any questions about the 21 days of prayer or how you can be part of it, please feel free to reach out to our team at push at efbchurch.org and we'll be happy to help you. We are praying for you daily and believe that God will do something amazing in your life during this season of prayer. May God bless you and keep you. Good morning, family. Three weeks ago, Pastor Max introduced our Welcome Home Task Force to you. And two weeks ago, we shared with you some of our plans as it relates to opening our sanctuary and worshiping together face to face. Our first step is to hear from you. We need and want you to be a part of this process. Please complete our survey today. You can find the link to the survey pinned in the chat box at the top of this Facebook post, on Realm, or in our weekly newsletter. Hey church family, talk back to me. Let me know that you've completed your survey. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Now is a time where you can do your part in building your church and Christ's kingdom. Join us in giving via text to give, Givelify, Realm, or Classic Mail, so that our church can continue to make a difference in the lives of our ever-growing community. East Friendship is intentional about stewarding our resources and raising up a generation of people who want to touch the heart of God through their giving. Let us now pray and ask God's blessings over these tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for blessing and keeping our church during this pandemic. We ask that you touch the lives of every giver, every home, and every family. There are those who don't have to give or are unemployed. We ask that you open new opportunities for them. Multiply and increase these gifts that we may do your work in the community and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us continue to worship, and right now, you can invite others to join us by clicking share right at the bottom of your screen. Help us spread the good news that God is still speaking and doing miracles around the world and right here at East Friendship. My brothers and sisters, we're just so glad to be here with you on this wonderful Sunday. We have all the King's men ministering today, and we have one of the men who have been ministering uh, throughout this virtual experience. You've seen him everywhere, uh, Reverend Sylvester Lee Dixon. We call him Lee. Uh, he is our preacher for this morning, and I'm so glad he's here. I know he has a word from heaven. Uh, Reverend Dixon is our small group co-director with his wife. Um, he's a singer, a songwriter, He's been a director of choirs. He's on our men's leadership team. Uh, he's an actor. Whatever you need, he's I got it man. Uh, me and this man of God goes back 30 plus years. I am the godfather to his children, and I'm so glad he is here to preach God's word. And so when he mounts the sacred desk, I ask that you stand to your feet no matter where you are to honor the man of God, but even more importantly, to honor the word of God. Uh, receive him, Reverend Sylvester B. Dixon. Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. neighbor. Okay, that neighbor ain't talking to you. Look at the next neighbor next to you. Say neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say I ain't going nowhere. Come on, say I ain't going nowhere. Until the Lord bless me. Come on, y'all put your hands together out there. Come on. Here we go. Yes, sir. We're going to have a little church on today. The song says, 
going nowhere. Bless me. Oh no, I ain't going nowhere. Everybody. Hallelujah. So glad to be with you. So glad to be in the number one more time. My name is Reverend Lee Dixon. I am a member of East Friendship Baptist Church. So thankful to our pastor, Pastor Maxwell, for this opportunity. I certainly do not take it lightly. But there is a word from the Lord. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like to get right into it. Amen. Let's turn to the 43rd chapter of the prophetic book of Isaiah. 43rd chapter of Isaiah. Verses 18 and 19. Once again, that's Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. I'll be reading from the King James Version, the New King James Version. And it reads thusly, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. 
Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, once again for this opportunity, God, to speak a right now word, a relevant word. Pray, God, that it will touch all that it's intended. God, help me to think with my mind. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight because you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. I'm going to use for a subject, faith for a fresh start. Faith for a fresh start. Many people are assuming this season of the COVID-19 pandemic is God's punishment for man's deeds on the earth. I, however, choose to believe that it is God's intentional way of getting our attention. It's like that warning light that comes on in your car and tells you that something is wrong and you need to fix it before it's too late. Say amen, somebody. Because of this virus, We've been forced to work from home, wear masks everywhere, order groceries from home, order re restaurant food from home. That's too expensive. If you want to go food shopping at the store, you got to wear that mask. You got to wear gloves. You got to take the Clorox wipe. I'm sorry, that's my wife telling me that. There's one thing for sure that we're finding out. It's a new day. Recently, 1,500 Walmart shoppers in the east, west, north, and south were polled and 55% of them came back and said they now shop online. You want to go to the doctor's office? Eh, let's do it on Zoom. Talk to the doctor on Zoom? Can we do that? Yep. It's called telemedicine, and it's gone from 4% usage up to 18% usage, and they say it's going to increase dramatically. Many of y'all are afraid to go to the hospital anyway because you're afraid you might get sick even though you're sick. Are you staying in touch with family? Well, let's use WhatsApp and Skype and, oh, Zoom. Want to take a trip? I ain't getting on no plane and sitting next to nobody with that Coca-Cola virus. Airlines are losing tremendous amounts of business because ain't nobody flying. Well, does anybody want to drive to the fun and sun state of Florida? Because your president said, you know, it's cool. Nope. Florida is now the number one hotspot in the country. A record 15,000 cases in one day of corona. And the governor of Florida still wants to open the beaches, the bars, schools, restaurants. Have you figured it out? It's a new day. I bet y'all miss going to the movies, don't you? I'm talking about date nights, you know, dinner in a movie, dinner in a movie. Anybody? I know I do. Well, now you got to order movies at home, you know, using the big three, Comcast, Verizon, and the Big Dish people, and argue over who gets to pick out the movie. Anybody need to go to the barber shop or the hairdresser? Honey, your hair looks fine. The natural look is back in. Many of the, is anybody riding the buses or the subways right now? Many of the buses and subway companies are forced to come up with new strategies to convince their travelers that the trains are safe and clean. And what about social distancing between travelers? How are you going to get six feet in a mask out of that? Look at the person next to you and say, it's a new day. How close are we to a vaccine? Anybody want to volunteer to take the first shot? <laughs> or maybe you want to do like, you know, your president says, and, and, and use intense light, you know, and, and inject uh, disinfectants in your body. Yeah, he said that. The kids are at home, and parents have become happy babysitters and homeschoolers, and they have to share their computers as they discover the good and the bad about working from home with kids. There's a lot more I could say here. I'm sure I missed some of your favorites. But one thing's for sure, it's a new day. And something's got to give. The day of the new normal is here, beloved. We are living in strange and troubled times. But don't be scared, because God's got this. You need to know that changes are on the horizon. This is not like... A New Year's resolution where you go on a diet, exercise for a month, do a couple of pop-up visits in church just to say you're alive, and then go back to life as usual. No, this new normal is going to require something different from you. It's going to require a fresh start, and most important, it's going to require faith. 
How many of you know that this pandemic has forced you to look at your life and consider making changes? I'm talking about a fresh start. You don't know how, but you do know change has come to your doorstep. Beloved, you can't consider a fresh start without faith in God. Fresh starts almost always usher in a period of uncertainty. It is a period that rejects change. Nobody likes to be forced to start over. You remember Noah when he told the people it was going to rain and they didn't believe him until it was too late? You see, oftentimes people reject change because it's unfamiliar. Like when you graduated high school, like it or not, you got to begin something new. Could be a job, college, the military, friends, new friends. You may have to move out of mama's basement. A new city, a new independence, new habits. There are other periods in your life that you go through the, that force this period of change also. For example, marriage, divorce, relationship breakups, uh, sickness. They are all required to make you adjust. I'm sorry, they all require adjustments. What is familiar to what is unfamiliar? What is the etymology of the word familiar? It is from the Latin word familiaris, which means belonging to or pertaining to a family or intimate relationship of or things known for long associations. All this to say, if you, listen to this, become too used to being with familiar things in your life, you will never understand that God wants you to be more desirous of the unfamiliar. Let me say it one more time. If you become too in love with familiar things, you will never understand that God is trying to take you into unfamiliar places. Otherwise, you will never grow. Anyone seeing in the same old place, doing the same old things, you're going to get the same old results. An old Greek philosopher, his name was Heraclitus, once said that the only constant in life is change. I mean, you know that there's always a cutting of the cord when we go from what is familiar to what is unfamiliar. Because at some point, you're going to have to embrace change. I mean, if you remember moments of transition and change in your life when you had to cut the cord. We cut the cord on friends and relationships that we've outgrown. We've cut the cord on lifestyles and habits that were incompatible with where God wants to take us. I'm talking about drugs, drinking, fornicating, partying. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We cut the cord on how we worship. We want more intimacy in our relationship with God. I like the way Pastor Maxwell says that. Intimacy, into me see. That's what God wants, an intimate relationship. Amen? We cut the cord on laziness and irresponsibility. And we have to commit to doing things the right way. We cut the cord on bad integrity. Who are you when nobody's watching? God is. Tell somebody it's time to cut the cord and embrace a fresh start. Beloved, I want to give you three points, three points regarding a fresh start, and then I'm going to take my seat. Three points regarding a fresh start. Point number one, point number one, stop looking back. Stop looking back. Point number two, Stop fearing the unknown. Point number three, follow the leader. Let me say them again. Point number one, stop looking back. Point number two, stop fearing the unknown. And point number three, follow the leader. Point number one, stop looking back. Verse 18 says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. The old folks used to say, but when I look back over my life, and I think things over. I can truly say I've been blessed. I got a testimony. You see, beloved, verse 18 is saying it's okay to look back to remember where he bought you from and what he did for you, but don't dwell there, don't stay there, don't get stuck. Or you will miss out on where God is trying to take you because he promised to give you a hope and a future. You ever get into an argument with somebody and the first thing they do is remind you of what they forgave you for. <laughs> that means that they are not yet delivered 
from the thing that they forgave you for. So here it is. Here it is. You see, the other person can't get delivered until you let it go, let God heal you, and stop bringing it up. I believe somebody's going to get delivered off of that right there. It's the same with God. Whatever he delivered you from, you better believe he can top that. The Bible says he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. That means if you think God getting you out of your Egypt, parting your Red Sea, and taking care of your provisions in a hot desert for 40 years, you think that's something? Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. You need to have faith that God will exceed everything he's done for you in the past and do even more extraordinary things in your present and in your future. Somebody needs to know that we serve a God of the amazing. Hello, somebody. So point number one, stop looking back. Point number two, stop fearing the unknown. Verse 19 says, behold, I will do a new thing. This is God talking. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Beloved, God is always ready to show you new blessings for your life and a fresh start. Even in your wilderness situation, he can make a way out of no way. He can make rivers run through your dry places. Nothing is too hard for God. And let's be honest, let's be honest. You didn't know how your life was going to turn out up to this point, did you? That's called unknown. Every day has a potential for you to discover the unknown. We talk about new mercies every day. Amen? You did a lot of failing and falling down, but you kept getting back up and doing do-overs until you figured it out. Now look at you. You got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food on your table, a decent job, money in the bank. Friends and family that love you and a savior that's got your back. And through it all, faith is the thing that brought you to it and kept you through it. Amen? All you need to do as a believer is stay in his will and by faith trust that with him all things are possible. Even when you're going through the unknown. So point number one, stop looking back. Point number two, don't be afraid of the future. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Point number three. Follow the leader. In just about every book of the Bible, God anoints a leader with a vision to lead his people. Oftentimes, God will send you a pastor and deposit in that pastor a vision. But people are always stuck on, why do we have to change that? Well, we've always done it that way. Well, that's like asking, why do we have to wear a mask? The president doesn't wear one. Well, the president doesn't have a vision. He is literally blind, and he's leading you to a cliff. Anybody want to follow him? Amen. Following a bad leader is like the story I once heard about a preacher who would visit five or six churches every Sunday. He was a circuit preacher. The only way he could get to those churches was by horseback. He trained his horse to, to go when he said, praise the Lord, and stop when he said, amen. So one Sunday, the preacher mounted his horse, said, praise the Lord. And he went to preach at a town in the nearby mountains. On the way, he wanted to stop for lunch by a mountain stream. He said, amen. His horse stopped. He got off. He ate lunch after lunch. He mounted his horse. He said, praise the Lord. And the horse took off. But he got a little lost. The horse started heading toward the edge of a cliff on a narrow mountain trail. The preacher got excited and said, whoa. And then he remembered and said, Amen. And the horse stopped just short of the edge of the cliff. The preacher was so relieved, he looked up and said, praise the Lord. Okay, y'all will get that later. Listen, if you can get out of your Egypt, your Red Sea, and your desert, that's three for three. Why not follow him instead of someone who's bound to lead you off a cliff? See, what the promise, the promise of a fresh start is, is following the one who leads the best. Okay, somebody, you'll get that later too. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Abraham trusted God and gave up his lavish lifestyle for a journey to an unknown land. By faith, Isaac obeyed his father, Abraham, to be a sacrifice. By faith, Joseph went from being in a pit to being a prisoner to being second in command of the palace. 
By faith, David slayed a giant with small pebbles and later became king. By faith, blind Bartimaeus received his sight. By faith, the centurion's servant received healing from a distance. By faith, the woman who suffered from an issue of blood for 12 long years received her healing. All of these people received a fresh start because of their faith. Now, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It says that the just shall live by faith. So you might ask, why is faith so important? I'm glad you asked. Faith looks at sin and sees forgiveness. Faith looks at two fish and five loaves and invites 5,000 to a fish fry. Faith looks at sickness and sees healing. Faith looks at recession and sees blessings. Faith looks at your imperfections and sees your possibilities. Faith looks at darkness and sees light. Faith looks at wrong and sees right. Faith looks at a prison cell and sees a front row church seat. Faith looks at Paul and Silas in the midnight hour here and hears a heavenly choir. Faith looks at shackles on their feet and sees a tambourine. Faith looks at you trying to figure it out why God has already worked it out. Uh, faith looks at this pandemic and sees God working it out. Faith looks at this past four years and says enough is enough. You need to vote. Faith looks at your life and sees faith for a fresh start. Beloved, sometimes the future can seem filled with uncertainty. But I'm reminded of a wise old church mother who used to encourage all the young people she met. It was as if everything she said was directly from the mouth of God. And she could motivate anybody to consider a fresh start. Amen. Especially with Jesus. There was an old hymn she used to sing. She would sing it like this. I don't know about tomorrow. I live from day to day. I'm not worried about the sunshine. Although clouds, they may turn to gray. I'm not worried about my future. Because I know what Jesus said. And I know I walk beside him because he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds, who holds my hand. Beloved, when you place your tomorrow in God's hands, then that's faith for a fresh start. Let's pray. Father, this world is going crazy. So many things going wrong, so many things going astray. But here's the good news. Here's what we know. We know that you got the whole world in your hands. So God, we're not worried about our past. It can't come back to haunt us. We are not worried about our future. Because you got tomorrow too, God. We are not worried because you are here to lead us, oh God, to guide us through all things. So God, we know that your word says. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We know that you've not given us the spirit of fear. Thank you, Father. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God, we thank you you've got tomorrow all taken care of. We trust, God, that by faith, you're going to lead us to a fresh start. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, somebody who just listened to this word, will you listen?
listen to me, even the worship, something, amen, that pricked your soul to the point where God said, you can be saved. If you want to be saved, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, pray this prayer with me. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that your word said, for God so loved the world that he gave you his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life. God, somebody believes you today. So here it is, God. We're going to make this confession. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary. I believe they took you down from that cross and they put you in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day, you got up with all power in your hands. And so, God, I believe that you are my Savior. So God, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for all the things I've done in my past. Forgive me, God, and receive me into your family. I believe I'm saved right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, you're saved. The Bible says that the angels are rejoicing right now. It also says that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. How many of you know that's true? And so, if you prayed that prayer, if you're on social media, we want you to go ahead and type something that suggests that you actually gave your life to Jesus Christ. We've got ministers all over our social media outlets. Just talk to them. Tell them, I just gave my life to Jesus Christ. What do I do now? And they'll be able to help you. Amen? If you're looking for a church home, consider East Friendship Baptist Church. You'll love our pastor. He's a Bible-preaching man. He'll guide you into discipleship. Amen? All the people at East Friendship are full of love. Our motto is that we're a community church trying to make a world of difference. Listen, we want to thank all of you for tuning in to our broadcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And if you, you want to email us and tell us about the service, we'd appreciate that. You want to email us, you do it by sending an email to kingdomtracks at efbchurch.com. Again, that's kingdomtracks at efb, spell the word church.com. Amen? And if you do that, then we'll know that you have given your life to Christ. And want to hear about what you have to say about the church and things that are going on here. Anything that you want to tell us, we'd appreciate your comments. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thanks for your giving and your tithes and your gifts. It helps us to spread the gospel. Amen. Not only locally and nationally, but also around the world. So God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bless What a tremendous and loving word from our brother. Uh, he helped us from the text in Isaiah to make sure we know what it is to have a fresh start. So if you're in a wilderness place, you should be expecting living water. What a word. Thank you so much, Reverend Dixon, for that word, for that invitation for discipleship. We just want to remind all of our men, we need you on point and continue to be able to minister to our uh, seniors and those who are lacking. Uh, we're hearing so many things about the virus moving up, and so we're going to have to be going back into distributing water and supplies uh, to those who are disabled and those who do not have uh, the assistance that they need. So I'm grateful for all the ministry of our men. Thank you, Paul Lloyd, uh, William Joyner, and all the team, including Reverend Dixon, who preached uh, for their leadership. Uh, we just want to remind all of you, if you come to each friendship, we're going to give you four pillars. We're going to do four things for you to help you to know God, in an intimate way, find freedom from anything that's been holding you in bondage. Discover your purpose because you've been designed by God for a special purpose and make a difference in the world. Now unto him that who's able to keep you from falling, this wonderful, sweet God who presents you faultless, continuously pursuing you day and night, now presents you to the world because you are his redeemed, that you may turn the world upside down. 
in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus, let everybody say amen. God be with you till we meet again. Wow, what a great service. Didn't Reverend Dixon preach that word of God? <laughs> wow, we worshiped together, we sang, we prayed, and we gave. To God be the glory. Thank you, East Friendship family and friends, for joining us today. As a reminder, we will replay this service at 3 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget our children will be live on Zoom at 1 p.m. And our teens on break this month, they're getting ready for vacation Bible school next month. Okay, again, we want you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. Please stay connected through our weekly Between Friends newsletter, realm, and social media family, okay? Continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, watch your distance, okay? Have a blessed week. See y'all next Sunday.